Alright, good morning guys. Um, I started making a video yesterday, but uh, everything came out kind of kind of odd. So, but uh, today I'm gonna make a video on my way of making bamboo shaft. Which the shafts I'm gonna be making today are pretty much the one I'm gonna be using, hopefully for spring uh, turkey season. Um, pretty much completely primitive style. I'm gonna use some obsidian points. I already weighed them in. Um, they're averaging, I got four points. The lightest one is weighing 100 grains. The highest, uh, the heaviest one is weighing 108 grains. <clears throat> Pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna be using some, some bamboo sticks that I purchased in Lowe's. I know some of you have asked the question on the some of the friend of mine is from the clan TST page and the women's um, clan um, with the concern with the reliability of the bamboo shaft shooting out of a modern recurve or longbow because yes we know that primitive people used to use bamboos very efficiently to hunt big game but we also know that the primitive bows back then didn't have the actual uh, speed that the bows in today's days have. <clears throat> you know, bows nowadays we use fast flight strings, um, whisper strings, all these kind of high modern tech strings that actually, you know, they give a quicker jump uh, from the line and um, with, the, with the heavier power stroke and feet per second as well. Well, I've been shooting bamboo Tonkins that I've ordered from eBay for quite a bit now. It's been like, uh, say, maybe two months since I've been shooting bamboos. And I shoot a 54 pound <clears throat> at 26 inches, which is a, is a white wolf. It's a still hunter from white wolf. And I chrono that bow shooting bamboos weighing at... 529 grains <coughs> excuse me <coughs> 529 grains and four shots I average from 176 to 178 so that says a lot that's that's a strong that's a pretty fast bow that's pretty uh, pretty fast for 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 a long bow 64 inches long as well and um, I've had no problems no failures with the bamboo shafts Tonkins are supposed to be known they're not the most strongest bamboos out there but they're known for having a heavy mass they, they tend to be heavy so um, people like it because it has a, uh, a lot of forward kinetic energy now this other bit bamboos you got river cane you have uh, um, the actual science, science term of the name I don't know it, but they call it Japanusa. They are from from Japan um, type of bamboos. They tend to grow fairly very straight. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure what type of bamboo the ones they sell on Lowe's are. They look similar to the Japanusa type cane. They have a very small pit. Not like river cane and a thick wall. And to be and to honest with you, it kinda looks like even the it kinda looks like the Tonkins <laughs> in a way. But um But I've been shooting them, I had no issues. I've had I even made a a torture test of one of them with a field point. I had a steel post and I only flattened just the tip and the the arrow is still alive. I still shoot the the arrow. I broke it only one bamboo and it was uh I hit the uh I kinda glanced a three D animal target off the back, the arrow bounced and ricocheted and hit a tree sideways and it broke at the node. That's the only bamboo I've lost. But are the wreck hits extremely strong. Remember they have no grains in the runouts where like wood arrows they snap right on the grain area in the runout. 
Uh, the bamboos are just a straight fiber, um, fibrous material, very flexible, resilient, and it flexes very good. It just doesn't snap by nature. So, <clears throat> anyways, uh, I have this book here. It's called Making Bamboo Arrows. Very good information. I learned a lot from this book. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of good books out there besides this. This explains to you uh, all the type of bamboos that, that they're out there, the characteristics, what to look for if you're going to harvest bamboo raw from, from the outdoors, or if you're going to buy, like, you know, like me, I, I purchased from Lowe's. I tried it out, and I paid 90, 93 cents for each four foot length bamboo stake. I mean, when I was buying carbon arrows, <clears throat> a shaft cost around, at the cheapest, from $6 ranging to $10 a piece, a shaft. And that's just the shaft. Uh, and I paid $0.93 cents for one stake of bamboo, and I hand pick it. Home Depot sells them in a bag where you really can't hand pick which one is you think is good, so you just buy a bag, and I'd say out of four bamboo stakes in the bag you probably get only two that probably is, is going to be good or is going to be useful and Lowe's they have on this rack individually where you hand pick the one you think is going to work for to become an arrow another thing they recommend I've seen on, on the internet is that you take a, an, an open wrench open end wrench and you measure the outside diameter of the shaft I've seen they recommend from 7 millimeters to 10 millimeters I didn't have a millimeter wrench, so I, I used, I took a 5 16 and a 3 8 and I measured the outside diameter of, of the bamboo stakes I was looking for, and also looking for the nose, the distance from node to node, make sure they were pretty much close to even, because also the book mentions that uh, um, it's good to find a bamboo uh, shoe or shaft that the nodes are, have an even space, let's say from 7 to 10, the next one has 10 inches also not to not to get the ones that have let's say from one node to another node that has like 10 inches then to the next node has like three inches that uh that can affect the stability or the efficiency of the way the arrow launches from the bow and the way it flexes and to stabilize its flight so other than that um, also, it talks about where to position the actual knock, I mean the, the slice of the knock that you're going to make. You just don't make a knock, a self knock, you know, in any direction of the bamboo. Um, the bamboo is say, just say in, in one shaft you have three nodes, <clears throat> which that's the recommended, so. I'm going to show you here um, a completed shaft that I just did. All right. <clears throat> this right here has three nodes. Um, they recommend that when you put when you put the knock, you look for the second node. Pretty much, and this one's going to be the one in the middle, the second node. Every node has like a little dimple, like a little hole where pretty much where the stem of the leaf was growing. On this one here, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If you can see, it has a little hole right there. So you're going to orientate the knot in that direction. So pretty much this dimple is going to be facing up when you put it on, on, the, on the arrow shelf, up or down. I recommend up because, <clears throat> at least on this one, when I flex the shaft inward, this is the strongest point, has more the most resistance. And you want you want the arrow with the most resistance closer to the to the strike plate of the riser. So that's what they recommend. And um, I spined them. This one's pretty much done. I already have Sydney wrapped here in the front. I already did I drilled a hole with a drill bit, which is where I'm gonna pee hefty my four shaft my four shaft is right here I made it out of a uh, oak oak dial I bought also from Lowe's uh, this, uh, cost me I think it's like uh, 
30 plus inches cost me a dollar with change. I cut this piece to four inches long and uh, I cut a line all through here like around an inch and a half and you start cutting with the knife to taper it down and testing testing until the actual shaft fit into the hole. Um, after I drilled the hole with the drill bit, I, I took my knife and I started reaming it in to make it flurrying out. That way it's easier and it fits better on the fore shaft. On the fore shaft, I'm not glue it's gonna be just put in tight, removable, but it's gonna be nice and tough, very um, tight fit. I'm gonna be making the, the slice here in the front where I'm gonna be hafting the sitting point. And um, tell you what, I'm gonna have a higher FOC, which is very um, ideally for hunting. You want a high FOC. That way when it hits the animal, it has a high kinetic energy, which I'm pretty sure you guys know already. And for you new guys that don't know, there's the information. Um, then again, uh, before I continue, I want to clarify. I'm not a professional. I'm just an amateur. I'm learning as well. I'm pretty much new to this primitive stuff. I'm still learning. I never thought I was going to get involved in this. But once I start reading and looking at videos, I liked it. I uh, I felt the actual importance of treasuring and respecting nature and honoring as well the people before us that actually hunted or well, did archery with just whatever material they found in the woods. You know, there was no modern bows, there was no stores. It was just those people shot a bow just because it was survival. It was a need to get food, put food on the table and feed the children and their wives and their families. All the tribe because it was the Indians. And uh, <clears throat> me starting to do this, understand now how hard it is because it is hard. It takes me, uh, especially this right here, it took me like I don't know how long. It took me like, Jesus, forever. And um, and now and then we have more equipment. We have sharp knives. We have saws. We have sandpaper. We have all kind of stuff. And it took me forever. So I can imagine those Indians back in the days that they didn't have none of this modern equipment. How long it took them or how difficult it was for them. And um, But they had no choice. They had to do it because without that, they couldn't get no food. They couldn't kill no animals to bring food. You know, to feed the, feed the tribe, period. <clears throat> or as a weapon to fight enemies that came to attack the tribe and the family. So they, use, they also use it as a fighting weapon to defend their lives. So, other than that, um, I'm going to start showing a small demonstration how I straighten these bamboos. Because they do come crooked. This one is straight. I strained this. This came all crooked. It looked like a snake. And um, this one is straight now. And um, yes, at first it's kind of tricky, you know, trying to learn how to hand straighten, make sure you don't do it, overdo it, you don't overheat it where you burn the shaft, or <clears throat> don't overbend it to a point where you where you ruin the shaft, which it, ha it has happened to me in the learning per uh, learning phase. Uh, overbend it, and the shaft overbend and it it broke. It didn't snap, but it kind of like, like rubber because it's so hot, it bends like rubber. And I just, you can see the crease on the shaft that's damaged, ruined. But you know what they say that with practice, things become better, it becomes easier. So, so let me start with this. Show you the, the shaft I'm going to be straining now. I'm going to show you the, the before. I'm going to show you when it's crooked. And I'm going to show you also me straightening it out. And um, hopefully the video doesn't become too long. I'll probably pause it. That way it doesn't come too long. And I'll come back when the product is uh, almost finished. And then when it's finished. So stay tuned and um, bear with me. Stand by. <clears throat> 